began at uh, Mohammedan school, uh, which said by as the PE teacher. Uh -huh. Those days you had dedicated um, sports teachers. They will go for specific training uh -huh. at Yundum College or Yundum Teachers College at the time, and specifically um, graduate in physical education. So we had said by and uh, at Mohammedan, my mom was a teacher, so I used to go to staff room and said, you know, became fond of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the first one to really encourage me, and it was first in athletics, because Said was an athlete, was a sprinter for the Gambia, um, top 100, 200 meter um, runner. So the first thing he encouraged me on was long jump. So what he did was at the back of the school, he put a long jump pit there. Mm. And during the breaks, I will practice long jump. That's how it started. Okay. Then um, the football came. And uh, I think I was the first one to be in primary four and play for the school team. But uh, then I was small. Mm -hmm. And the only position, I guess, that the big boys didn't like to play at the time was goalkeeping. Mm -hmm. So I became a goalkeeper for Mohammedan school. And uh, basically that's where it started. Um, the next person was Cherno Toure, who had a lot of impact on me as far as sports was concerned. Cherno Toure? Yeah. Crab Island? Crab Island. He encouraged me a lot and actually he was coach of the national team when I played my first international as a goalkeeper for the Gambia at the age of 16. I was still at school and uh, had to be going after school to Yunum. I was driven to Yunum every afternoon to go for practice because the teams were camp at Yunum. The um, Yunum at the time, it was a sort of a military base. It was, we didn't have a military, but we had a field force. But it was one of the sort of uh, military installations in the country. So the national team used to camp there. There was a football pitch, and I was taken to practice and brought home every evening to go to school the next morning. And uh, Cherno was the, the, the national coach at the time and he encouraged and gave me that opportunity. So that's where it started. Oh. Then uh, I moved on to St. Augustine's. Um, Father Goff met us at St. Augustine's uh, when he came and uh, he took up from there. That um, saw the talent I had and just believed in me and gave me a lot of opportunity. Um, but when I, by the time I got to St. Augustine's, I was already sort of practicing with Rhea. It started actually uh, at Crab Island in 1970, 71. I did a year there. Um, and Cherno used to have training sessions with Rhea. And I was the water boy for Rhea. Mm. I just loved the team. I camped with them. I did everything with them. And I trained with them. So I was encouraged at the time with, by Mam Said. Mam Said, yeah, he was the manager of Real. They called him Hank and Keba Dias. Mm -hmm. So they will encourage me to train with the team. Even though I was young and small, they, they gave me the opportunity to train with Real at the time. And that's what I said to some people that um, what that gave me was a lot of endurance as a young kid because I would run from Banyul all the way to mile four Saro and back with Ria at the time down the beach from Banyul to Denton Bridge. And it gave me a lot of endurance and also a rapid growth at the time because I was eating and really um, training hard with the with Real de Banyul. So, in essence, that's where it started. Mm. 
and my first international also was given to me by Real um, in in Bamako. I was 15 when we played in the African Championship against uh, Joliba. Joliba of Mali. Of Mali. Mm. Um, my brother Jim was the uh, top first goaler for Real at the time, and I was his reserve. But when we got to Bamako, he got ill. Mm. So I had an opportunity to play my first international at the time for Real. So your first international for Real was goalkeeping? Was goalkeeping. After my brother left, I uh, was still goalkeeper. But um, what had happened to Real was um, about nine players or eight of the starting 11 left Real. And that's how the Ports team was formed. Ports? Yeah, Gambia Ports Authority team was formed from Real. Just like Wally Dan also was formed basically from Augustinians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, eight players left in mass at the time, left Real, started. at the time. So that gave people like us a lot of opportunity to come into the team because they just scraped the team dry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I remember my brother was national goalie before I took over also. Mm. And um, I remember us playing Guinea and they beating us 4-0 in Conakry and I think 2-0 or 3-1 in Banjul. That was before my brother left for his studies. So I took over as a goalkeeper after that. Um, but I didn't play against Guinea as a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. I got the opportunity first to play against Guinea in the Zone 2 competition in, um, in Mauritania. And you scored? I scored four goals against them. We beat them 5-1 or something. So I called my brother and said, hey. Go back to the first. I, no, no, I told him that I got, I got the Guineans for him. Mm. Those four goals, they scored him in Guinea. Yeah. I've sort of, you know, recovered it for him. Yeah, yeah. and that was really exciting and um, was uh, one of my best games as far as scoring is concerned that I can remember as a national player. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's talk about your, your, your high moments in, in your career. What would you say stood out well for you? Well, um, as far as football is concerned, I think um, I would say that Zone 2, when I won the uh, leading goal scorer, that was, you know, I think a big highlight with eight um, countries competing and winning the goals. Uh, leading goal scorer trophy. Which year was that? That was in uh, 83 um, in, in Noachot. That was a big highlight. Um, I think also scoring the winning goal against Freetown when we were opening the stadium was another really highlight in my uh, football career as far as um, Gambia national team is concerned. Um, other highlights was um, in high school for three years I was Victor Drum for the best athlete, you know, in uh, inter-school competition. Um, I was first in four events, three consecutive years, and um, those events were long jump, triple jump, high jump, and four by one hundred relay. Then uh, the other highlight as far as athletics is concerned was to be the first Gambian to compete in the World University Games in Bulgaria in uh, 1977. 77. Yeah. So um, with tennis also, highlight is playing in the African Championship in 1984-85, somewhere around there, um, competing in the African Championships in Libya. In, in, in tennis. Mm. Um, also competing in uh, two African basketball championships was another highlight in, in my career um, for, for Gambia. For the other sports and other activities I got involved, they were not 
but there were no major accomplishments, I would say. That is basically rugby was not that organized, but you know, we played against Senegalese teams and you know, French teams and so forth in Senegal and here. And uh, a few times we had some British visiting navies also that we played rugby or things like that. So there wasn't too many official uh, competitions, but um, we had some competitions which also was, you know, fun in a sense. And the same thing with volleyball. Mm. I never really competed in any major um, international competition for Gambia, but we played in Senegal, go to Casamas and play and so forth. And uh, I think we had one time the opportunity to play um, uh, Guinea, I think, or Mali in, in, in volleyball. But um, as far as highlights are concerned, I think um, those would be the highlights in mm. my sporting career. Mm. And how were you able to combine all those disciplines together as an individual track and field volleyball and uh, football i all sort of uh, reflecting on it and i tell people that i coach especially athletes that the key to success in anything is fitness <laughs> uh -huh. and i think i was in very good shape uh, most of the time, I was in better shape than my opponents because I really worked hard, I really trained hard. And it started, like I said, at the age of 11, 12, doing, you know, all those footings on the beach, uh, six, seven kilometers a day, um, gave me that stamina, you know, built me up to be strong and I continued on that. Um, and then going to America at an early age, where I found out that they were just so serious about sports. And the, the, the key also there was fitness. You have to be fit first before even working on your skills. And uh, I had that opportunity and that, you know, I think gave me an edge. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you talked about your highlights. Let's also talk about your low moments, things that you won't want to remember now well i still remember the, some of them oh. and um i i remember for example the zone two in uh, in uh, in senegal that uh, i was not allowed to play in uh because the, there was no real excuse in my book, but the reason given was uh, he flew when the team sort of took the bus um, to, to Senegal. And I have excuses, but that doesn't matter. Uh, it was disappointing for me and uh, a low in my sporting career or the time that I played for the national team. The other time was in when Gambia hosted the Zone 2 again in 85, I was away in England for my studies. Um, it was winter time because the games were in January. It was winter time. I was in England and I was out working hard, training hard to come back and play. And I was also doing extra works at school. And uh, I was able to arrange with my teachers to do extra work so I can take a break to come to Gambia for 10 days and uh, compete in that competition. Until the last minute, when I was ready to pay my fare, I actually got a ticket um, last minute to come and everything. And I was told, no, you're not, you cannot join the team. Who said that? Well, the association that time, or the powers that were within the association at the time, were like, we don't need him. Um, that was very disappointing for me as far as um, football. So those two opportunities, those two zone tools that um, I didn't have an opportunity to, to play was really a low for me in, in my sporting career. Uh, I think losing to Wally Dan, like I said to you, young Africans, Wally Dan in 83, uh, and that match actually, there is a video of it, 
uh, scoring a goal during regular time and uh, the referee disallowing it. And up till now, I, I knew the referee very well. He cannot tell me why the goal was disallowed. Um, we went into extra time and uh, Walid and beat us. And that was a really low moment for me because I thought and felt that we were cheated and um, of you know that much and that was disappointing so those are a few moments as far as football was concerned that i really felt that um, were low moments for me um, 